Every year we wrap things up with a list of games I like the most and dislike the most. We put them out there. It's kind of evergreen, my definitive say on the year from top to bottom. This year I want to add a little bit of a wrinkle and add in things that I'm most excited about. I wouldn't necessarily call this my top most anticipated games of 2024. Kind of feel like those videos go out to die. You put them out there, then knowing this industry, there's a showcase, a leak, a rumor, some sort of shadow drop, and suddenly that list is flipped on its head. It goes out the window. It's just a video that to me has too much of a timer on it. So I typically avoid it, but I wanted to try this year not only to connect with what I think I'm most excited about, but also to hear from you what you're most looking forward to. So we're gonna do just that. 2024 is looking to be off to a slower start if you're not a big JRPG fan. But if you like Japanese games like I do, you're in a world of trouble. So I want to start there because Sega is making my life difficult at the end of January. You have the new Yakuza game coming out. This looks phenomenal. I'm not like a diehard Yakuza fan, but you've got this sitting here with this like Animal Crossing mode, this new setting, which was kind of rare for the Yakuza games. You spent so many in Kamurocho and then they finally evolved it with like judgment and then the newest yakuza game and i was like okay cool like we're starting to get new settings and like this is the biggest investment so i wanted to be there for it but then they're also releasing this oh, like a week or so apart at least as it stands now from my beloved persona 3 reload and persona being a series i adore and is home to one of the biggest video essays we've done here on the channel which by the way we were so on point about to the i think point that sega was afraid to share the video because they said they were going to share that video and we predicted so much correctly in that video down to that persona 3 remake would happen first so yeah we uh we got sega's number here but anyway they're making our life difficult here because they have these two great looking jrpgs like around a week apart from each other and i don't know why they would necessarily do this because it reminds me of battlefield 1 and titanfall 2 where you have these great compelling options for first person shooters and you kind of just send them both out at the same time and they have the same audience so they're gonna pick the hotter subject and that just may be Yakuza that may be Persona but these fan bases are shared so I do hope for a delay on one end or the other so that both these games can thrive we've been waiting for Persona remakes for a long while three was just the most likely candidate because of how old it was and what it introduced that really made the franchise as popular as it is and so I, that's why i'm really excited about it because like when i played persona 4 that was my entry into the series and i adored it and then went back to persona 3 on persona 3 portable i've actually never really played in full a console based persona 3 game so that's why reload's kind of exciting because there will be those new layers there but it also stands the chance of being one of those remakes that you wish they did more with Persona 3 is definitely a flawed game, and understandably so. I don't really hold it against it. It's phenomenal for its time. I think it holds up well in a lot of ways. But, like, Tartarus, this main dungeon, like, they're not doing much to overhaul it. Visually, it looks pretty good. But, yeah, it, it doesn't make the meaningful changes like, hey, we have 200 floors here. Like, how is that going to pace out again? Because that wasn't that great in the original Persona 3 game. So, how are you going to fix that here? Uh, there are social links that could have been better because it was the first time they were doing social systems so there are some hopes here on like what atlas could do to make things better that they seem to be holding back on to respect the original vision so i think the conversation may turn into like yeah this is great and all but like why don't you do x y and z there's also the, the voice cast is going to be different so i can see a lot of people kind of bouncing off this thing from the outside looking in but for me as a huge persona fan I'm just excited for more. I am so, so excited for more. Anytime I see this game, the style, the music just wins me over. There's this track that's already out for the game called Paint of View. Just look it up. It's incredible. Now, moving on down the wire here, there's also Hellblade 2. I'm really, really excited for Xbox when it comes to 2024. And I think anyone who's remotely interested in the ecosystem should be too, because this feels like the year they're going to pop off. I think they did a great job in 2023, contrary to what a lot of people believe. But to me, like 2024 is okay. There's no more distractions from ABK. Like you own them. You own Bethesda. You have a lot of your first party games announced. A lot of them are set to go. Hellblade 2 being one of them. I, I mean, there's just so many questions that they have to answer going to 2024, where it's just going to always be something exciting happening in that ecosystem, I feel. But to me, the creme de la creme, the crown jewel, I think, for Xbox going to 2024 is Hellblade 2. I think this is almost the PlayStation style exclusive that Xbox fans have been looking for as much as they've been looking for a Marvel game, which Xbox answered the bell with last year with Blade. And so, yeah, just to, to have 
this kind of game on the platform i think is going to do so much for it but it's beyond what it means for xbox as a platform hellblade is one of the best indie games you could have played the fact that it was 20 dollars was criminal to me i mean it was a nice six hour adventure but the storytelling the audio design how it conveyed this messaging about mental health and how it connected to senua it was a powerful video game its combat wasn't fantastic but now they've been heads down for years and years and years working away on hellblade 2 this is a team of perfectionists at ninja theory and i thought the combat looked really fun and visceral in this newest trailer they showed at the game awards i'm really hoping for a release date soon but the intensity of the acting like it just felt like a powerful game it reminded me of how i felt when i saw the last of us for the first time but i don't think hellblade 2 is gonna have spent all this time on like scope i think it's gonna have spent a lot of its time on like the the moment to moment presentation the intensity of the acting like i think that's where a lot of the if you will the money is going here like i don't think hellblade 2 is going to be this 70 hour epic i think it's going to be like a tighter adventure uh, maybe akin to a god of war like maybe pushing upwards of 2030 in the terms of the main story i know ragnarok goes on a little bit longer but point being is i don't think it's going to be this massive game I, I feel like they're just focusing in on what made the first hellblade right and then expanding that so i, I cannot wait for hellblade 2. we also have coming out next year dragon's dogma 2 as someone who adores the first dragon's dogma it's so cool to see capcom just invest a ton in this i thought they were going to transform what the series was when we heard rumors of a dragon's dogma 2 and you know kind of change the identity because no doubt like dragon's dogma is a bit janky when you play it it's got elements of so many popular games from souls like to monster hunter to, to elder scrolls even like it's got a little bit of everything in there and that's what gives it its identity it gives it its heartbeat uh, the vocation system is awesome the amount of different ways you can play the game of course the pawn system being the defining factor like i was afraid they were going to say oh well why don't we just turn this into a co-op game why would you need a pawn at that point but i'm so glad they recognized that and doubled down on all these things that made dragon's dogma special not that co-op would have made it worse but i think just we get so few original mechanics in games i feel like the pawn system where you can download other people's companions and they're familiar with different parts of the world and can kind of give you quest tips and whatnot is such a novel idea and incredible use of ai that i think works well with a single player game i just wouldn't have it any other way so i'm really excited about dragon's dogma 2 not only for that but the scale just seeing like a big titan break through a bridge is my defining moment when i saw the trailer and went wow they're going all the way. I hope the story is a little bit better this time around. I felt like that was a bit of a miss in the original Dragon's Dogma. It wasn't bad. It just was kind of there. But yeah, I'm very, count me very excited for Dragon's Dogma 2. Probably my most anticipated game out of everything announced. We also have a really big banger at the top of the year in Tekken 8. Uh, as I record this video, the demo just came out and I haven't even laid my hands on it, but I, I am so excited for this game there are only a few fighting game franchises i have a lot of true love for unfortunately growing up i spent most of my fighting game time on anime tie-in video games as you may already know if you watch retro rebound that's where a lot of my time went and i don't regret it at all but i didn't get to develop connections with like street fighter i played mortal kombat here and there and i do have a connection with that but like if there was one i was really playing a lot and loved a lot it was tekken Tekken is a beautiful series to me. Just the way the fighting works, the 3D elements, the story and how they change how you play the game. Like I remember Tekken 6 had this kind of like brawler combat mode that reminded me of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, which is a fighting game I really loved. But then you also had this very competitive, highly touted roster. And Tekken 8 is just, when you look at the story trailer, how high production value it is, the, the graphics are insane. And then you look at the roster there, Arcade Quest being this new kind of mode. I, I just feel like they are priming this thing to potentially be the best Tekken game yet. So I, I just can't wait to play this game endlessly with friends. I got the Platinum Trophy for the last Tekken game. I can't wait for the DLC, the fact that we got like Negan and we got Noctis in Tekken 7 DLC. It's... You never know who to expect to show up, so I can't wait for them to announce some of the DLC characters. But yeah, just for the base game, it looks pretty meaty, pretty jam-packed, which I think is increasingly rare for these fighting games. Like, I feel like they just go, here's your roster, we have a ranked match mode, we're shooting for Evo stage time, enjoy the game, find out some combos. 
it feels like this one especially with the ghost mechanic which is allowing people to get better with ease uh, this is going to elevate the fighting genre in a meaningful way i also want to talk about greedfall 2. this is one that we know very little about so i'm not going to talk about it too long but spiders really won me over i felt like that was an rpg developer that was always on the edge of greatness i never played steel rising unfortunately that game looked fantastic though if someone can let me know down below if it's actually worth playing but greedfall was the game i covered a lot on this channel and i love the approach to, like colonial and i love the approach to colonialism i love the world the choice focus i remember the ambition spiders had they said we want to fill the void that bioware left behind which is pretty big words i think and i i thought they hit it out of the park greedfall was a really memorable game for me one of the better rpgs last generation and so to know they've been toiling away on this new one and that greedfall 2 is going to get a lot more info this year i hope it comes out this year it's not guaranteed but yeah just excited to learn more about this one because i thought greedfall was the first rpg spiders put out that they got it like they really did hit a home run there and i expect the next step to be even more massive for them going off the board a little bit further though this is more of a leaked rumored title but of course i gotta talk about it because if it is true it will probably be the thing i talk about the most on the channel is that combination of the oblivion remake and the fallout 3 remaster you all know how i feel about these games i don't think i need to wax poetic on fallout 3 or oblivion much longer but it comes from more of an enthusiast point of view why i'm excited like fallout 3 it's okay can you give me an excuse to replay the game okay great whereas oblivion because it's been teetering back and forth between remake and remaster as a title i feel like this is one of those situations where if it's a remake that's gonna be a whole different ball game because seeing that game visually updated combat wise updated like how far are they gonna go especially because if you're bethesda you got to be conscious of Sky Oblivion. I, I know they can act like they're going to march to the beat of their own drum and there's a degree of pride there, but like, look, Sky Oblivion's remaking that whole game from the ground up and everyone is behind them. So if you can instead push that and not your own remake, which is going to be inferior, I hope that they do the wise thing here and either invest big on what this remake can be, which is like, you know, overhauling the dungeons, making them a little more visually diversified or if you're going to remaster it just own it as that and price it as that same thing with fallout 3 you know just give me that all day i'm excited to go back to these games i think many people are after starfield to kind of reconnect with that traditional bethesda game studios exploration i like that bethesda seemingly is looking into exploring these alone just because they always said like we like to make the next new thing and i'm like that's just bad business to me because you have millions of fans ready to play these games again and they want to make sure they're preserved on new hardware and some consoles don't have access to these as easily as others so it may be in your best interest to bring them forward one more time and so i'm glad that it looks like they're going to drop the act and finally get to it i also want to talk a bit about star wars outlaws yeah this is one that i can't lie going into starfield i was like yeah a star wars game i love star wars but yeah, yeah starfield is gonna be my big star wars game but walking out of starfield i thought to myself you know what i need a star wars game and looking at what massive is doing there at ubisoft and just how epic a open world star wars game can be has me excited because of hogwarts legacy actually hogwarts legacy was a game that like i don't think is incredible from a design perspective but i can totally see the fan service there going so far for people which is why it's many people's game of the year uh not to discredit what it does really well it may have just resonated with you that much but for me like i'm a massive star wars fan so you can give me this very generic ubisoft style open world and put a star wars skin on it and i'm probably gonna love it so ubisoft if there's one thing they're consistent at it's reusing frameworks but massive the reason i'm excited about them developing this is these are the developers behind the division and they've actually gone off the board before and kind of overhauled how the games from ubisoft are designed and out of a lot of the ubisoft series that have come and gone i've always loved the division as one of the newer things they've done next to mario and rabbits i think the division one was a ton of fun when it came to the dark zone and division two was one of the best live service games that launched in the terms of quality like it was impressive in a time where all of them are broken ubisoft's like here you go it works day one and it was fantastic and addressed all the criticism of the first game it just didn't have the legs quite like destiny did but i really enjoyed the division and so to have that talent behind now a star wars game 
count me in i'm excited how can we make a video like this without talking about final fantasy 7 uh, final fantasy 7 rebirth looks just downright special i i gotta say that as time goes on like i reviewed final fantasy 7 remake real positively and recommended people buy it but as time goes on like 7 remakes just a special game now that can age poorly because they're playing with some very precious elements in the story and this can go south fast i will warn you on that if you haven't played it but what's there in in my heart like as someone who loves final fantasy 7 like many others out there uh remake was such a special product time's only been kind to it and then looking at rebirth opening it up you see vincent valentine you see sid like you see yuffie's of course going to be there because she was there with intergrade like you see all of these meaningful things that they've added to the game chocobo riding again like it, it's oh my god this looks like an epic in the making it looks like a runaway for game of the year potentially this is a special looking video game and so much so i'm really on media blackout this is gonna be one of those moments where while i'm editing this video like i'm gonna be very much glazing over what i'm seeing on screen i just know those first few trailers i saw i went okay sold give me more i'm ready for that because final fantasy 7 remake to me just has some of the best combat in the business that mix between action and turn-based there's nothing really like it I, th I think you could argue it's the best evolution of action combat that we have had since the free flow combat system and i would totally agree with that like that's how i feel personally maybe you disagree but yeah i just think final fantasy 7 rebirth is primed for success i can't wait to play it and then the last game here on my list is Eden chronicle 100 heroes i have not played suikin in 2 but i know it's beloved and naturally i'm very excited for the suikin in 2 re-release but even in chronicle 100 heroes has a lot of the original creators of suikin in working on this much larger scale open-ended kind of game with the same ideas right like you're going to recruit over 100 heroes and they all have their own stories and their own time you can spend with them tons of mini games it's got like turn-based combat and then it's got like war mode it, it looks like an insane project and i know it's gonna be day one game pass which is really exciting to see xbox getting involved in that kind of game but yeah you didn't chronicle 100 heroes just i think it looks spectacular and i love these sort of hd 2d style games that octopath traveler has given birth to this is another one of those although it has more 3d elements than 2d like the sprite arts there but the entire world is like 3d kind of reminds me a bit of what square enix did with the new star ocean 2 remake so yeah i just gotta say a lot of things to be really excited about you'll notice here though a lot of jrpgs like metaphor re fantasio end of the year that's another one i'm extremely pumped for it feels like atlas saw what was happening with fire emblem and just clap back on it but at the same time it feels like a good entry point for those who aren't interested in like the school life of persona and want to go become a king or something more fantastical i think a lot more people can get behind that i think it's going to be like a more mature approach although persona to me is very mature in its storytelling and its themes uh, I think there's going to be like more of an adult story. Uh, so I'm excited to see all of these games and I will be reviewing all of them, whether it's here on Retro Rebound, make sure you're subscribed, but I'm looking forward to hearing from you what you're most excited about. So please fire away. And with that, take excellent care of yourselves and I'll see you next time around. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.